hey, do you remember back a few months ago when we did a story about Arnold's Bar? Yeah, I remember that too. For those keeping track at home, it was episode 60, Last Call at Arnold's Bar, that we had back in February of 2022. Well, Jen, Chris, and Christina, and our friend Katie, went on a paranormal escapade there in October. And tonight, Jen, Christina, and Chris will be sharing their experiences with you and me, because I wasn't there and I'm learning all of this for the first time too. So, sit back, relax, it's a chatty episode with us as we talk about Arnold's Bar, again. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Cincinnati Cabinet cabinet of curiosities presents the hometown haunts podcast i'm cat cloco unsure of what i'm doing right now and tonight with me in the shadows are jen and christina and our friend chris they'll be joining us momentarily you can follow us on social media if you want to see all of this all the time you can find us at sin cabinet curio on twitter and at cincy cabinet of curiosities on instagram you can join our facebook group hometown haunts as well where we constantly update it with silly memes and interesting things about Cincinnati throughout the week. We are dying to hear from you, as you could tell from my house, of your personal encounters with the paranormal and fringe history from your neck of the woods. Send it to hometownhauntedmail at gmail.com or join it and share it on the Facebook group that I just mentioned. We're an official podcast that can be heard wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you want to see us while we're doing the show and watching things fall from my shelves, you can watch the video feed on YouTube. Find us by searching Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities. And please rate and review us on all those platforms so other spooky histories just like yourselves can find us. Of course, the link is in the show notes. Also, I want to wish everyone a happy Krampus not Eve. So yeah, tomorrow is when Krampus comes. Yeah, I just did the American pronunciation of Krampus. Krampus. By the time you hear this episode, however, Krampus or Krampus may have spirited you or naughty family members off into the woods. So be careful out there. So with that, Jen, Chris, Christina, come back to the haunted house, to this haunted room. Hello. So we can talk about Arnold's bar and all the fun things that happened there. How is everyone doing? Good. Did you want to do the short history first before we dive? Yeah, in? I could go into the short history. Chris, do you know any of the history of Arnold's bar? Very, very minimal. I mean, um, I mean, I know Jen told me a little bit, but um, not a whole lot, no. Yeah. Did you pick up on anything while you were there? Oh, yes. Before, before I dig in? Yes. Very much so, actually. Okay. Um, yeah. Like, can you say real quick before I go in and tell you about the quick history? Uh, like, did, yeah. did you sense anybody and just be like, this is where I did on the first floor or the second floor or in the bathtub or... Oh, it was immediate. Um, it was uh, our group. We went up to the third, the top floor, um, and it was. I I got to the top landing of the step, and I look over to the left, and I was like, "Oh, hi, this little girl, um, <laughs> little cute little girl who stayed with us all night, actually." Um, and then there was a little boy, um, also in the like the back little kitchen area. Um, he liked to hide, um, mm -hmm. and I didn't get any more. Well, no, I did. I did actually get him again for a brief glimpse on the second floor. Okay. Um, and then when we went down to the second floor, I think at that part, uh, at that time, I think um, definitely uh, somebody had met. Yes, they had uh, during their little tour, they had said, you know, this is like the brothel area or whatever. Well, when I went into the second floor, I actually saw the beds um, mm. and there was a couple of ladies of the evening um, standing in the windows um so that was that was very interesting um and then in in the bathroom um i i the bathroom was very interesting um it was it was very quiet 
in the okay. bathroom. I was almost eerily quiet for me. Um, it was just like crickets. And you know, like there was definitely the presences there, but oh. they were being extremely quiet. I do want to mention that we do have people of all ages that listen to this show. So, okay. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just like, before I need to put that warning at the very beginning, let's just, uh, mm -hmm. Thank yeah. You. Um, so, um, and I had something happen to me in that room later on after um, we had a couple of people exit the room. I okay. actually, I came back into the room and Jen, I think it was just you and me and the one lady for a while. Yeah. And I was recording the entire time while she was in the tub. Okay. Yes, is this lady mean, a real lady? Yes. This yes. was the real, like the real par Sorry. paranormal. She was par part of the group that was doing the ghost hunt. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. making sure just for context that I understand what's happening and our listeners know what's happening. Could yes. you give me that um, recording too? Go ahead. Could you give me that recording too? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll Thanks. give you everything. Ooh. Is um, this an audio? Yes. Uh, I, I don't know how good it's going to be because, again, I wasn't trying too hard. And really, it's just blackness because I was recording with my video camera, mm -hmm. not necessarily you, just the sound. So, But you did get all the lights, correct? Yes. And uh -huh. that was what I was going to say. Nothing was happening in that room until Christine went in there. Okay. Like with the other groups and everything. And this is the exactly. bathroom on the second floor? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Yep. It and it started that. as soon as she walked in the damn room. It <laughs> linked, Darn Jen. Room. Sorry. Now we're just going to have to bleep you with a cat oh, meowing. Sorry. Cat meowing. <laughs> um, that and all of a, and all of a sudden it was, it was, it was like the beacon in the place, mm -hmm. and like actually, like lights were going off all over the place, um, and it was. It was like that was the portal, to be mm. honest. And there was just a whole bunch of all, everybody started talking all at the same time. And I was like, okay. Um, all righty. Uh, so I was trying to pick out different voices. And then um, something that had not happened to me before was that we started getting absolute conversation back and forth uh, in Spanish. Oh. Um, and I was like, well, that's new. <laughs> I love it when you get different languages. Yes, there was, there was definitely, um, there was a, a, a former lady of the evening who was there, um, was talking so fast. I, and I not only understand a little bit uh, mm. of Spanish, um, but I was trying to understand a little bit and pick out words here or there, which wasn't easy. Um, the little girl was in the room. Um, th that, that little girl followed us all over the place, mm -hmm. um, trying to warn us, trying to, um, I think, keep the others at bay a little bit, mm -hmm. um, especially in the, in the bathroom. Um, and then, Christina, I think um, you and Katie eventually then came in and, and saw a lot of that as well, I think. Yeah, we came in for a little while. Yeah. Wow. All right. That's a lot. And we can dig more into that after I finish doing the quick history. So sit back and take a listen to our quick history. So those of you who have listened to this episode, it's episode 60. And we talk all about the ghosts and everything as well. We're not going to go into the ghosts this time, but this is the actual history of the building. So Arnold's Bar was originally built in 1838. Susan Fawcett allegedly operated a brothel out of the building. The, bath, the bar room where you enter Arnold's at 210 East 8th Street was once a barber shop, and the first floor of 208 East 8th Street was a hay and feed store. The courtyard that I and hundreds, maybe even thousands, of patrons have enjoyed a pint used to be a stable. Simon Arnold opened his bar in 1861 in that first floor room at 210 East 8th Street, and in doing so became a legend in Cincinnati bar scene. He ran it until around 1900 when his son Hugo took over. Hugo, his wife, and six children lived in the apartments above the bar, which used to be where the brothel was. In the 1910s, Hugo took over the building at 208 East 8th, which allowed the second entrance and room in the bar for women. In 1920s, 
In the 1920s, Elmore Arnold took over the family business. During Prohibition, Arnold added a kitchen and converted the second floor apartments into a dining area, becoming a cafe and staying open. However, a bathtub was left on the second floor. Legend has it that Elmore was most likely making bathtub gin in it, and word of mouth pegged the building as a speakeasy. To this day, the bathtub is still there and has become an icon of Arnold's bar. For 98 years, three generations of the Arnold family owned and operated the bar. In 1959, it was sold to two brothers who lived in the building, Jim Christakos and his brother George. Jim was a former pro wrestler and mob collector, a.k.a. a depth debt collector. Please don't come after us. During this time, the Greek spaghetti appeared on the menu thanks to Jim's wife, Athena Jones Christakos. In 1976, Cincinnati Councilman Jim Tarbell, he is famous here, purchased the bar and moved in upstairs and expanded the bar into the courtyard along with the other renovations, such as the 26-foot old mahogany bar in the restaurant, was salvaged from an old bar in Covington in the 1970s. Meanwhile, the stage in the courtyard is made from floorboards from the old Sherbert Theater. In 1998, Rhonda, Rhonda, Rhonda Androsky purchased the bar after working as a longtime server there. In 2019, her son Chris Breedwin, Breeden and his wife Bethany took over operations and they currently own it. The bar has been visited numerous times by Hollywood and TV, appearing in episodes of Hot Ones, Man vs. Food, and the NBC show Harry's Law, a law drama set here in Cincinnati, which built a replica of the bar as a hangout for the characters on the show, even borrowing staff uniforms, table tents, and artwork as set pieces that are now located on the second floor of the bar after the series was canceled. In the 2015 film Carol and the 2006 teen film Marauders and a 2020 film 10 Minutes Gone all have scenes at Arnold's Bar and it gets shut down quite often for filming. On Wednesday, December 29th, 2021, Arnold celebrated the 160 years of continuous business and for being Cincinnati's oldest bar, it is only natural that it would be haunted as well. Listen to, as I mentioned, episode 60, Last Call for the dead at Arnold's Bar. For more information about the wonderfully weird haunts at Arnold's, some of them Chris experienced, we do know that it is haunted, but do we know by who? So that is the wonderful quick history of Arnold's Bar. It sees so many people all the time eating Greek spaghetti. Yeah. It's such a cool, it was so cool to see the upper floors and how they're they're still dated Mm -hmm. and i like that that they that they're dated like i hope they never update unless they absolutely have to yeah you know yeah i'll be honest i've only been in the courtyard i've never gone into any other part of the building yeah i hadn't either oh really so you've not eaten there before or i drank once which is why i only remember the courtyard (laughs) I mean, it's, I used to do life drawing on Court Street and um, mm-hmm. they used to always go to Arnold's afterwards. I only went oh, a couple okay. times. Yeah. Although one night when they went there, they all got held up. That's a different story. Oh, oh my. Fortunately, I wasn't there that night. Wow. Oh, yeah. I feel bad for them. This was like <clears throat> the 90s. It was a while okay. ago. Oh, okay. You know, grunge <laughs> pants being held up on at Arnold's. I was... Uh, uh, at one point during the night, I was chatting with one of the owners and he said he had gotten it from his mom who used to be a server there. Yeah. So you, you talked to Chris then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hello, Chris. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. And it was just, Sorry, it was kind of cool. He's like, we just see it that we're, you know, we're just ca- taking care of it for right now, you know, which it's. It's kind of neat, like they're they're trying to protect the history of it and the culture culture mm-hmm. around it. Yeah. That is really good. Those are yeah. good bar owners. Yeah. So how many yeah. people were? So you were there October twenty eighth. There were Was quite a few something, and, but they split us up into like th- three groups. Okay. Yeah. So we yeah. like we started on the attic. Another group started on the lower floor, and then one started like where the bar and the restaurant is okay uh, and then they switched us after like half an hour or so yeah that's pretty mm-hmm. standard yeah. ghost hunt public ghost hunt management yeah. 
Was there a ghost hunting team that was, or a paranormal mm -hmm. team that was leading it? Yeah, yeah we yeah. should probably mention them. Let me yes. look that up really quick while we're talking. Yeah, that was the first time I, ha I had that because all the ghost hunts I've done were at very large places yes. that just let us roam on our own. But it it's small there. Arnold's, yeah. Arnold's is small, so you mm -hmm. can't just let people go off willy-nilly, especially no. since it is an operating business, too. No. Yeah. yeah. And there was, um, they de definitely have a, a basement cellar, um, but, you know, they didn't let us go down there, which was really good because I don't, I don't like cellars. They're mm -hmm. not, they're not good for me. So, <laughs> yes. and I mean, like, there's just too much in the dark. Um, mm. Cellars are, are just, they've got their own feel and I, I, I just have a really hard time with them. So I was oh, like, oh, thank sellers. God, we don't have to go down there. And I had um, my boot. Um, I, I oh, tore a tendon yeah. in my foot. Ooh. And I was like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do all these stairs. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry. No, yeah. I kind of told just her, I'm like, we're going to this on Friday night. I kind of forget. In Cincinnati, <laughs> assume there are stairs and that they are narrow. Yes. It's, it's what I yeah. warn my in-laws about when they visit. Yeah. You did okay, yeah. though, Chris. Yeah, no, I just took my time. I just yeah. really took my time and let everybody else go up, 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 up in front mm -hmm. of me. Yeah. Um, so by the time we went to the, you know, all the way to the top floor, I was the last one to come up the stairs. And um, most everybody had already gone to the right. Mm -hmm. um, you, you couldn't go to the left, but that's where the, um, they had it roped off where their office is oh, yeah. uh, on that side. Yeah. And she was just kind of peeking around the corner until I came to the top of the stairs and she was just right there I was like, oh, well, little buddy yeah the yes. hunt was oh sorry no, the, the, the hunt was organized by cornerstone paranormal oh yeah that's right I have you worked about. with them before cat i have i believe they were the team i was with when i saw the full uh shadow person walking through um i just forgot post town elementary school now, they, where was that and this was a number of years ago, like 2014 or so, but Cornerstone, I think, used to have a dog that they would bring on investigations. Her name is escaping me, but they would put on a vest with her with all sorts of the bleeps, bloops, and blops that you want that light up so that if there was any spirits trying to pet her, um, I think her name was like Sadie or Sophie. It would that's, light up and it that's worked. Different. That's kind of yeah. Cool. yeah. 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 It, it was, she was a great dog. I don't know if she's passed away or not. Um, Cause it's been a number of years in dogs, yeah. but um, there it, was it, no dog there. Well, I wouldn't expect one also in a tavern or a yeah. bar where there's food being served. It, yeah. it just True. Not, uh, post town is just a large elementary school in uh, Middletown, Ohio. So yeah. you could have um, Mickey has gone there as well as, a sensitive mm -hmm. dog and Aww. absolutely did not smell anything but or sense anything i don't think she did anything she just wandered around cluelessly hmm? say the there was the group that put it on corner so they were really fun there was this one kid who was in the attic and he just stood there really still <laughs> and quiet and he had a really cool name but i can't remember it at the moment but i'm like dude you're kind of creepy and he was just like i'm just standing here <laughs> No. But he, he was a he he was a good sport. He was a he, member of the team. Uh -huh. He was the, just there just to keep an eye on people, I think. Oh yeah. 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 I've I've and, been a part of hosting these types of events before and what they're doing is, is absolutely what you want to do. You post yeah. people throughout so they're not hitting things, taking right. things, right. and then you time everyone so you switch every mm -hmm. so often so that yeah. everyone has a chance to be um I almost said explored by the paranormal, but that is not how I want to phrase that. <laughs> Everyone has the, the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I was going to say so they could, everyone could be felt, but that's, I think, even worse. Yeah. yeah. Experience. So, <laughs> experience. Like experience. It's the paranormal. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think that it's, it's, it's smart. Because you have a bunch of people you don't know going into a place after hours. So you never know yes. what they're going to do. So, I mean, it's good to have a big enough team to monitor everyone. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, but they they were all really really nice and yeah, professional and yeah, yeah they were no, really they're a great. good team. I'm yeah. glad that they were the team that was in charge. So you started on the third floor, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when you walked in, what did what happened? Were dowsing rods involved? Any flashlights? EMF detectors? They had all of those things. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, didn't they have all those things? I thought they had all those things. They did. The the one guy yeah. had the infrared with the iPad thing. Oh, is that the one with um? I always forget the. It the, shows the hot and cold spots. Oh, the flurry. Yeah, that was cool because there was a lot yeah, of activity on that. Yeah, there was. And the, I was going to say, go ahead, Chris, go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, Kat, in, on the second floor in the bathroom, they had what I like to call it, I because I always forget the, the name of it, but it was like the stick figure. Yeah, the connect you know, system. Yeah, yeah, the connect system. Um, I think and that's the, really cool. Yeah. It, oh, it really was. But by the time our group got there, because that was the last floor that we did, um, was that floor, and um, it was dying out of battery. So we were like, Oh darn, you know, we're not going to really get to see anything. Well, mm -hmm. Nope. All of a sudden we had, we had a whole bunch of audio and lights and everything else going off. So wow. yeah. We yeah. had the tampon lights, but they weren't the same shape. Okay. Yeah. Remember um, that? yeah. <laughs> if everyone remembers, I'm sorry, James, but <laughs> at, at the Anchorage man manor, we have what we we have dubbed just the show the tampon lights mm -hmm. it was just a series of emf rem pods that were chained together and unfortunately they were all white and chained together like a train of tampons <laughs> whomever designed that was not a woman true or a lady. and in james defense he probably does not really see them that often so no That's and true. We love you, James, but ooh, <laughs> the designer of that. Well, anyway, it was the first thing I thought. Yeah, that was my foot. That wasn't a ghost. And because um, I just bumped my foot wrist again. Um, yeah, that was. So they had those. What did they look like then if they didn't, weren't the tampon train? Were they circles or? They Were they like tiny kinda... little black? Um, Maybe. Cylinders with like little antennas. Are we talking about the ones that were in the floor, Jen? Yeah. Oh, oh. Um, what did those look like? They almost looked like the string of like uh, the rope of like LED lights mm -hmm. or Christmas lights. Um, I don't remember yeah. exactly, but. But they weren't Christmas lights, but they were. No, the they weren't colors. Christmas lights. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. It, it would really. That's what I'm like misremembering, but because that's what it really looked like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. So they still yeah. had the basically a, a chain, a daisy chain of mm -hmm. EMF. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a neat invention. I mean, I wish that was there years ago when I was more active doing investigations. Because my goodness, the amount of shadow people I've seen walk up and down hallways that would trigger that is so much better than the laser grid where you're staring at little green points of light. And you're like, am I going nuts? Why are they crossing type of thing? These are much more distinct. So... Yeah, that's that's cool. Did they have anything else? Um, they gave us uh, like they handed out um, oh, what those bouncy balls that light up. Oh and, yeah, the bouncy balls. Those were cool. Yeah, those were fun. Um, but didn't really have a whole lot of um, anything with those. I tried to play with the little boy a little bit, mm -hmm. um, kind of rolling the ball. Um, I felt at one point in in not the bathtub room, but in a different bathroom um, upstairs. I was tr there. It was like he was hiding behind one of the shower curtains or something. And so I was trying to play with him a little bit. But I think it was just there's so many people um, and he didn't really want to kind of yeah. partake in anything. Yeah. I do want to note that all of our listeners, you would have just heard the sound of a young boy as Chris was describing all of this happening. That is, in fact, a flesh and blood living child that is just beyond this door <laughs> who's waiting for story time. So <laughs> I'm sorry if we have just creeped you out. <laughs> the timing just, was excellent. You have, a, you have a Foley artist. <laughs> yeah, we just have this. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> the timing. I could just hear him singing mm. in the background as you're describing Aww. it, Chris, Aww. and it's picking it up on my mic, and I'm like, oh, this is just <laughs> chef's kiss. We yeah, should have we should have not said anything and seen if anyone commented. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can cut it out. <laughs> no, that would be too mean because then we would have everyone emailing us in good faith, going, "I heard this little boy." And... <laughs> Like, huh, oh, we're just hilarious. joshing, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so tell I them see. about her standing next to you. Yeah. By the office. Oh, say which time? Um, because when they came over to um so I just kind of started leaning against the door frame. Um, mm -hmm. and I just had my hand down to my side and she wasn't there and he she, she, they, a whole bunch of people were talking. She wasn't there. So they, um, and he's the one that had, um, I don't know which one of the ghost hunters was, was up on the, on that floor, but he's the one that had the, um, the thermal imaging. And, um, and I, and the little girl grabbed my hand and just kind of like, you know, just slipped her hand in mine. And, and I was like, okay, we can do that. That's not a problem. And um, she just stood there and he just, I mean, Jen, you're the one that saw, I think, mm -hmm. the, uh, Christina, I don't know if you saw that too or, or not. Um, the I, image I think you were in her. the back room with the dowsing rods. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Still, so still. Dowsing but yeah, rods. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, there was nothing in that back room once Christine left, Chris left. Yeah, um, I, I've heard a lot about those dowsing rods just yeah. being so still. <laughs> so still. Perhaps supernaturally so. Oh my yes. goodness. I, I have to say props to them being that still because anybody who is a denier of dowsing rods could have been there and watched them just from your descriptions, just stay rock still, yeah. which deniers go, well, no, because your blood's pulsating and it's going to naturally make them move around. Now you have some evidence Contrary yeah, they that. did not move at all. I mean, there was no response. I mean, there was no misinterpret. I just didn't respond. Just wow. didn't respond. Just were there anybody around Chris when you were doing dowsing rods and they're just sitting there going, uh -uh, I'm not touching it. It was just me and Katie were there. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was I, another I, member of our group that had the dowsing rods. Yeah, that had the dowsing yeah. rods because I okay. suggested using them because, you know, you've had good luck seeing them used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, although I've never used them myself i mean i thought it would seem to work perhaps mm -hmm. yeah it did not <laughs> <laughs> it did not okay. um but once christine came out of that room and she was leaning against the door uh the guy with the thermal imaging came out and chris asked if there was anything there and i was watching it and i did take video of it um there was like a shadow on the iPad screen, right? It wasn't, it was across the hallway, but the hallway was not very long. So something was there because it eventually went away, but it, it just looked like a dark spot. So there, so you got speak. a dark spot on the FLIR camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that'd be something very cold cold yes yeah yeah and okay. which is interesting which is what because chris said yeah it, sorry. yeah I, mean, I got that definite like that cold chill um but it was very interesting because you know i got that i mean you know this cat or you know just that like icy hand you mm -hmm. know um but there was like kind of like when our palms kind of touched it did warm up mm -hmm. um so that was that was interesting mm -hmm. um and I would signal her when I would feel her throughout the air, like the rest of the building. And I would just put my hand to my side and I would just kind of wiggle my fingers and she'd come over and hold my hand. Aww. So yeah, she was, she was a cool little kid about yeah. seven or eight ish. I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Just wanted some companionship. It sounds like. Yeah. Did you get a good look of how she was dressed at all? Oh, I was trying to remember that earlier. Um, so she definitely had um, like a below the calf length skirt on. Okay. Um, she was not dressed very well at all. 
Okay. Um, she she wasn't like awfully dirty, but you could definitely tell that she was there um, during the brothel time. Um, okay. Couldn't necessarily get out of her if she was one, like if she, if the one of the the ladies was her mother. Or mm-hmm. if she was like a little sister or a cousin or just someone, you know, a little per- little girl they took off the street to help clothe and keep warm. I kind of got like the impression of, you know, they all kind of like watched over her, mm-hmm. but she obviously didn't make it, you know, to their age to do what right. they did. Um, so she basically like, I think, helped do the laundry, the, some of the cooking, you know, just the everything you know what i mean just yeah. kind of like an, an all over uh chore helper yeah so, so um was her hair up was she wearing an <clears throat> apron any she colors was not, she was not wearing an apron i didn't get any colors i just kind of got like a <clears throat> like a dark brown kind of okay. skirt um her i would say kind of like um a chemise type you mm-hmm. know that old time, like blousy, like drawstring kind of neck with, it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not like 1800s blousy, but, you know, just an undershirt, you know? Okay. Um, so she didn't yeah. have a formal top on. No, and this, she didn't. this sounds like weird questioning. And you're just like, Kat, where are you going with this? Because the 1800s had a vast fashion change. Like we Very. started back in the, um, Regency era. So if you've seen Bridgerton, Regency era is where we started and we ended with mutton chop sleeves. Look at Crimson Peak. That's where we ended in the 1800s. So these kinds of questions, when people are able to see apparitions, I'm like, what were they wearing? Because if they're from the 1800s, it is super easy for me to pinpoint where in the 1800s they're from by the color that they're wearing, the types of layers that they're wearing how they're wearing their hair, all these little cultural cues via fashion of just timing them. So these are why I'm asking these kinds of questions. It's, it's proven useful in investigations in the past. So mm-hmm. yeah. sorry, I'm just asking you all these fashion no. plate questions. It's like, and what were they wearing? And were they wearing makeup? And what kind of top were they wearing? And what kind of undershirts were they wearing? Well, it's yeah. funny you say that because Christine is into those things. So mm-hmm. it's she's definitely going to notice that. Yeah. Yeah. It is handy. And, yeah. Go ahead, Chris. No, I was going to say when when I saw some of the shadow ladies on the second floor in the window, um, they were very um, it, it was almost interesting because when I came up to that landing and looked straight towards the windows, it was almost like I was in um, an episode of like. Um, like um, this French brothel show that I I used to actually watch um, and it was in French and I was like, this is amazing. What is going on? Um, And, but you know, they were in, you know, either just like the full on fancy bloomers or Mm -hmm. like there was one that had full, like the full fanciest type, like they weren't silk, but they weren't, like they weren't high society, but they tried to look high society bloomers yeah. um, with like ribbon, you know, there was like silk a pale adjacent. blue. Yeah. Silk adjacent. It wasn't rayon at that point <laughs> no. yet, obviously. Um, but it wasn't like it would definitely could like not a really nice silk. cotton blend. Yeah. Something <laughs> like that. Um, and um, there was, you know, the, like the, they had uh, the corset, um, like the underboning corset with, you know, their, their undergarment, you know, blouse top, um, you know, underneath. And then one had like, kind of like, it was like, I was just literally like walked up into like a movie set. Is that how I will say you accurately describe them because corsets went on top of Mm -hmm. the shirts, not Mm -hmm. below them. Nope. And that would have been the very beginning of when boning would have been used. Yes. Before that, it would have been stays. Anyway. Yes, dork for this kind of stuff. No, I what, I actually like, was the show Harlots. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> that was, there was like a one, there was one that was on like that was that took place in the 1800s. It was really recent and that was pretty popular. Mm. Oh, no, but I'm gonna have to look that one up now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was on Hulu. I don't know if it's still on. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, they but... had like one had the like the scarf slash shawl with the long fringe. Yeah. Um, you know, um, they had their hair up in like a messy bun, um, mm -hmm. like just kind of wild. Um, but you know, when you when you asked about the little girl as well, the same impression I got with with the women was, you know, like the little girl was barefoot. Mm -hmm. um, the the women were also barefoot. Um, you know, the feet were dirty, their hands were dirty. Um, I'm I think Jen, I think I may have even said to you, I'm really glad I can't smell what I see right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Because I was just like, oh, you know, back in that time era, you know, yeah. they were lucky if they took a bath once yeah. a week. I mean, That's once why we a had month, perfume. really. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you could, I could see like, you know, like I saw two distinct beds, like the old school metal, like iron, thin, right, thin rail mm -hmm. um, beds. Um, but then there was like a little bit of like, what I would, I would think that was like a perfume type bottle. Um, there was a, um, there was actually, this was interesting. There was like a jar of like salve on one of like an end table. Um, and I've heard tell that, you know, they didn't have lotion. Spit was at a commodity. So they had to get very creative in their wares for certain clients. Um, and so I wasn't overly surprised to see that, but I had never like seen, seen that I've only, that's actually something I've only read about. So I was like, wait, is that what I, oh, that is what I thought it was. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. And that so, was the main room at the top of the stairs where the four tables were. Yeah. Where the, like it was set up like a cafe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So while you're describing that, I was looking up dresses from the 1830s and the best I can describe it is little house on the prairie, but Brown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just, but Brown is it, for our listeners out there. If you're ever curious. <laughs> so anyway, so we have 70 year old girl wearing Brown dress. Um, and she didn't tell skirt. you her name at all. Mm. No, not that I remember. I wanted to, part of me thought that it was like, that it was a J name. Mm -hmm. um, but quite honestly, you were standing so close to me that I, I, I was just not a hundred percent sure if she just kept trying to like repeat your name Oh, versus point. my name, you know, uh-huh. Oh. Like, like an echo, you okay. know? Like, because you and I have such a close connection as it is, mm -hmm. um, or if she was, it, it just didn't seem right that she was trying to say her name was mm -hmm. a name that starts with a J. Like, because some, somehow I was like, I was like, are you trying to tell me it's Jen or Julie or, you know, Jillian? I, I, and she never really landed on anything with mm -hmm. me. So, yeah. Okay. It was just kind of like, that's not important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sure, let you me know. not actually call you your name. That's not sure. Jordan. <laughs> Small child. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So she, the child, what, just walking around with you. Um, and then you also saw a young boy. Um, just for, just a few brief minutes. Ju oh. I mean, just ever so quick and boom. Um, and he actually was... Um, he was, you know, in that room on the third floor in the back room where like the family would have had their kitchen, uh, I think. Okay. Um, he actually went hiding underneath the table. Oh. Um, yeah. And was like, nope, mm -mm, I don't I don't really want to come out. I don't really want to be seen. At the same time, I think he had a super mischievous mean streak to them to him. Oh. Um, but it but I think he saw at least our group like. I'm not even going to bother with this. Mm. Like, yeah. Um, and he was part in that room that was like frozen dowel rods. Oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. He was just like, uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, again, I got to ask, what was he wearing? Could you tell? Yes, I actually could. He actually had um, the, um, uh, it they were pants that came mm. down to about just the top of his 
feet, just the top of like okay. it's around his ankle. Um, they were really dark. So I couldn't tell if they were like that dark mud brown or if they were black. Um, mm -hmm. They were definitely filthy. So that's mm -hmm. why I couldn't really tell. Um, he had uh, a white shirt on. It was not, it did not actually have buttons on it. It was mm -hmm. older um, okay. than the buttons uh, already. Um, but he did have suspenders on that were okay. also very dirty. Um, very mop top unkept hair um just again very glad that i couldn't smell this little boy child who i'm sure was raging with hormones at one point so that's a smell how old was he oh like at one point i originally had thought i got the impression he was about five but i really think he was actually um, just really small for his age. I actually think he was closer to like 10 or 11. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get that the two were actually f family. Okay. They're two completely separate entities. Okay. So maybe different times. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So still third floor. Is it the possible notes. the boy was older? Like, like just appearing as a boy or... I didn't get that impression necessarily. Like if it was a man who was trying to like, you know, revert back, I did not get that impression um, at all. Like I got more that, you know, um, he had younger siblings. He had older siblings. Like if, like when the family all lived together, like he was constantly felt like he was packed in. So by him going underneath the table, that seemed like it was second nature to him. Like that was his little hideaway. Like I can have my own little world underneath the table. I mean, and I know as a kid, I would do the same thing. Like, oh my gosh, I can go underneath the table, hide underneath the tablecloth and nobody knows where I am. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I also got the impression too, that he wasn't, like I said, when he was smaller for his age, um, A, because nobody was as tall as we are now. Um, and they just, they weren't that tall back then. Um, but that he also might have been a little more like frail, like maybe, I don't know if they didn't have like, obviously as much food with that big of a family that maybe, you know, he wasn't as well nourished. So he didn't grow like taller yet or have his growth spurred or, or what, but no, I did get the distinct impression. He actually was truly a, a child or an adolescent. Okay. Yeah. Like he could have been sick when he was a baby or a toddler and that could have also uh, prohibited him from growing taller, getting fuller. I don't know. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's just me hitting my mic. Um, so did you get to the second floor? Yeah, you did. Cause you talked about the bathtub. Mm -hmm. So did you go there second or did you go there third? Third. Third. So yeah. then that means you went to the ground floor next it was the bar the bar was yeah, good the bar. Bar yeah was yeah good. okay so what happened at the bar well i got to sit in the seat that was supposed to be haunted and Ooh. i had one of the wasn't it an emf detector is that what i had you took with the app oh no yeah no, you had the, app. the little the thing that kept before. going off red. yeah i had the app the spirit talker app oh, spirit talker app yeah you get this you were telling me about it and uh i have I pictures it was of like that too. It oh, just charged you for it. it charged us, yes. Um, oh, that, but it that kept another, going off. It was just flashing red constantly. Yeah. The EMF reader. Uh -huh. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. People were feeling like you, you. There was the you. Was it you, Chris, that said there was something off there? Like there was. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, I'm looking at the Spirit Talker app on here. It, yeah, it's quite humorous. We had uh -huh. fun. I like how yes, I'm. This is just I can't protect you. Is the what they're using as their main when you look at it as <laughs> their ovulus. And I'm like, oh, well, that's a phrase. Anyway, yeah. I yeah. think it, I think that's. I, I mean, I guess it's used on some TV show. Somebody that was there said, and mm -hmm. perhaps so. I mean, it seemed like it was a little bit sus because it seemed like a lot of it was horror oriented yes mm -hmm. um which i mean if i was inventing an app i mean i would probably want it to be like that 
<laughs> well, yeah. And it, you'll see in all it didn't of the. Disappoint if, it just says I'm for saying. entertainment use at the yeah. bottom. That's our little disclaimer. Every single one of them is like that. All the different ghost meters. Yeah. So they're fun yeah. to use during a public hunt like this. It's fine. Um, yeah. Didn't it's, you say it interferes with the equipment though? Actually, It does. It interferes with your equipment masterfully. So um, if you're doing an actual paranormal investigation, we usually either turn off our phones or definitely make sure they're in airplane mode or theater mode and stored somewhere else that's not going to interfere with detectors because um like what we saw with the ones that we were using at the anchorage and james even mentioned it when it flashed like a purple color it meant that an sms text message was going through and it was detecting that huh. and um so new emf detectors are better at discerning between those text message signals versus call signals versus maybe something paranormal but old school, which is where I um, started, no, every any signal was a signal. And uh, so you could get misinterpretations of data, basically. Mm -hmm. um, the only things that didn't really seem to be interfered with were the, um, the mag light flashlights. Mm. Those didn't seem to interfere. They're a little, they're a completely different can of worms. But if you had your cell phone, you could still use a mag light or you can use a dowsing rod or a pendulum without issue. Or if you're super old school, a spirit talking board. But um, I don't think Arnold's would allow that to happen. Um, Did but... you see, you saw a lot on the, before we went to the bar too, like at the, when we were sitting at the tables, I thought you saw some people there, Chris. I did, um, which when we went from the main entrance side of the bar to <clears throat> the side that we actually with the booths that we sat in, um, yeah, there was there was distinctive like m more shadow activity on mm -hmm. I think on the the booth side, um, and you know, and then finding out that oh yeah, that was the ladies' side of the mm -hmm. bar. Um, versus the men's side of the bar. Um, yeah, it, yeah. Um, it, it was interesting. Um, yeah. It was. It, the, uh, I, they said that they're in the mirror on the, the main entrance to the bar. The mirror is supposed to be a portal. Um, I did not necessarily feel anything like that that night, per se. Mm -hmm. um, so but I, there was a lot going on mm -hmm. at the bar with different, with all the different people speaking and, and going back and forth and back and forth. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so Christina and I were at the end of the bar with our backs to the, the main window to the street and had the spirit talker. And like, we would ask a couple of questions that, um, you know, were very, you know, like we got feedback on a couple of the answers where we're like, oh, okay. Um, I even asked a couple of questions about like other portions of our group and got some, um, some feedback on that as well. And I was like, okay, so now then I started getting up and I was like, okay, I want to go to the other side where it was quieter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then they were like, oh, okay, let's all go over there. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the point. Uh, yeah. Did you see anyone spiritually who was smoking around the bar? Um, I didn't, but it was interesting because when Jen and I first walked in and there was actually people like there and we, we were the first ones to get there for dinner. Um, I actually walked through a thick cloud of cigar smoke. Ah. Um, yeah. Like right in the front door. And I was like, Oh, uh, okay. Um, it it, it just reminded me of my great grandfather um, quite a bit. Um, and I will also say, um, Jen, I think I told you when we went into the, um, when they were gathering us together after dinner to mm -hmm. go into the, the courtyard area, I think I walked in and like, cause I'm such a big horse person. I instantly was like, Oh, okay. Yep. This is, this oh, is horses. Yeah. 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 Instantly. Yeah. Um, I was like, I can smell the hay. I can smell the ammonia. I can smell the yeah. manure. I was like, it's just like it to me, it's home. So, yeah, um, yeah I was like, oh, it's just, <laughs> it's such, it was wonderful. It was a great smell. And now um, you can have saturated. dinner out there. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. In the courtyard, that was yeah. the stable. 
Yeah. yeah. So, so I, oh yeah, I was, so when you were saying that earlier, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. That's um, also the, the smoke. The reason why I asked that is that is the only for sure we, as in people in the paranormal know who that is associated with the bar. And that is a former chef named Steve. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. Yes. I he died in 2012. Wow. So, oh, really? Yeah. And his, he has been seen um, smoking around the bar and right outside since his death. So huh. um, yeah, this, the fact that you mentioned it was right when you walked in and that's where Steve hangs out and he just sits there and smokes. So you so, saw him. Well, smelled I him. I smelled, um, and I, I don't know what he smokes. So like, yeah, it, it's and the only descriptions we get are cigarettes or like any kind of tobacco product, which yeah, that's diverse. There's a lot, but yeah, it, it's you you experienced him in the place where he is reported to be experienced. So, no, so you, Jen, I'm sorry, no, it's okay. No, I was gonna say, Jen, was that where were you sitting in Steve's seat? Then? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I was going to ask, where was the place you said was a portal? Because they kept saying it was the mirror, but where did you yeah. say it was? Was it the bathtub? The bathtub room. Mm, was the portal. Yeah, which... Because they said it was very active. They said that was the most active place. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, which I believe it also actually had a mirror up on the mantelpiece as well, um, which is very common for mirrors. Um, so... You know, I wasn't overly surprised, but there's also outside the window of that room is a lot of electrical wire, a lot of mm. electrical boxes, uh, power box, power grid stuff. And I happened to look out there several different times while, you know, things were um, very quiet in that room to begin with. And then when Jen and I went back in that room, just the two of us and then the, uh, the uh, paranormal girl, um, I looked out there again and it was like the, it, like the power lines didn't have as much of a glow to it. Um, mm. So it was, it was, I found that just was like, Oh, well, look at that's coincidental. Um, mm -hmm. And then things are just like ding, 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 like going off <laughs> all over the place. So you <laughs> had, I, what was going off? Was it like REM pods going off? Was it mag light flashlights flashing correctly to answer you? Like what was going on? So they actually had a beaker like an actual oh an like, ovulus uh-huh they had an ovulus there and they were they had been asking questions not getting a whole lot um of interpretation like a word here or there mm -hmm. um throughout the night um they had um you know like i said before they had the motion ipad um thing and for a, a for a little bit well um you could see they said that they had seen a child um, come in and out throughout the evening or whatever. And then like somebody that was kind of dancing, I think around, um, around the tub, around the end of the one of the tubs um, or not one of the tubs, the tub. Um, Let's hope it was dancing. Yeah. I don't know. Were they yeah. naked? I <laughs> No, it, I, I wasn't going. People. I wasn't going in that direction. I was <laughs> going more in the negative direction. Yeah, more like the attack. So, like, if you're only seeing the victim and you're not seeing the aggressor, it will kind of look like they're dancing. Yeah, and yeah. Sorry, that was oh, just me. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I didn't oh, think yeah. of it that way. It's, yeah, it's. Uh, Have there ever been confirmed murders there? Well, there was a brothel, right? No, well, none that people are recorded. Were murdered there. But, but there could have been, yes, attacking. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. I will say, it, I yeah. didn't dig that deep to see if there was anything recorded there. So I can't uh -huh. actually reply in any discernible way. Not so the yet. answer is no comment. I think <laughs> we need to go back and have lunch or dinner there. Yes. Yeah. We yeah, can. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, we'll just regale them with everyone we're seeing around us <laughs> well i was like i said yes and i'm like well wait a minute I'm, it would have to be very special for me to come over um which i can do yes but the, you guys might be able to go before i can <laughs> so you go it, you oh yeah that's true mm -hmm. yeah that so, was so um, bathtub yeah. yes bathtub uh 
so um i was just trying to hang back quite a bit because i'm just like i just want i want to you know let the voices completely just try to be as quiet as i can at least get one or two not a onslaught mm -hmm. um and uh and i wanted to spread out a little bit um and so I kind of walked out when everybody was kind of in the, the bathtub room, I walked out of the bathtub room, walked back over to the windows um, on the street side, you know, spent a little bit more time in there, um, got a couple of different scents going on, um, like, you know, a little bit of candle, which would have been candlelight um, and just, you know, a couple of things like that, which have been very stereotypic where you would see props on a movie scene anyway. Um, and then... Jen, I don't remember. I think you and I were across the hall. And then I noticed that everybody had vacated out of the bathtub room. So then I went ahead and walked into the bathtub room. And, and I, sat <laughs> <laughs> I sat down first. Um, Seriously, no, I really think they started going off the second you stepped in that room. They just about or did when I, when I went in, they were already going off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the lady, the paranormal lady, she was like, they haven't done this all night long, like nothing at all. Um, wow. and, and then the, the, the talker, I mean, they just started talking just da, 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 and started talking through and like, you couldn't ask enough questions. And, and then at one point I got up, um, it's like the lights took a break. Everybody kind of like took a break to breathe a little bit on the spiritual level. Um, so I got up and went to the other chair by the actual window and um, I sat down and there was a couple other people, I think that popped in uh, like humans that popped into the room um, and they, things weren't really going off very, very much. Another of the paranormal investigators came down who had had the thermal energy on the third floor and he kind of looked at, Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, she looks like Miffy. Aww. Oh, who is Don't that? Worry. That is Sophie. Um, Aww. say the full name. Oh my gosh, she's the Duchess Sophia Tolstoya Al Alexandrovich. Aww. So she's named after Leo Tolstoy's wife. Yeah, and she's a hoss. Like a little itty she's so head. cute. Mm, she thinks she's a demon. That one. She's a demon. Yeah, they all demon. are. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, Anyway, so uh, so then the little girl had come over um, and had you know was kind of like standing next to me. There were um, there was there was a Hispanic man that kept speaking, but there was um, a Hispanic speaking female that came through. I got an absolute like straight up. She was she was one of the brothel workers, um, and I I asked the question. I said, did you take care of her? Um, meaning the little girl. And it was an emphatic before I got the question fully out of my mouth. No, <laughs> like, uh, uh, that woman did not take care of anybody. <laughs> I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Just good to know. Um, she may not was... have been like the little, the child may not have been around when the Hispanic woman was there. Could so, be. Yeah. Could they be. may have altering timelines going on. Yeah. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I could not make out what the the gentleman who was speaking Spanish. I could not could not understand um, the majority. I just kept kind of picking up with like, you know, just the feeling of it that um, the Hispanic female really didn't have good feelings against the male. And there was a like a bad energy. Not necessarily. I didn't get the energy like a murderous energy, but mm -hmm. it was just like, they just clearly did not like each other mm -hmm. at all. So I don't know if they like, you know, definitely like if she really was one of the workers and, you know, that was one of her clients. I really, you know, I don't know. Cause I don't know quite that deep on the history, but mm -hmm. um, I just, I was just like, this is new. I have never been spoken. I mean, in such um, insistency, Mm -hmm. Jen, I don't know, like, if you kind of felt like that. I feel like it was like, I didn't matter if you were sensitive or not. They were just like, blah, 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 blah. I was like, wow, this All is All I lot. saw was the lights going off and the uh, the app talking. Mm -hmm. and Yeah. 
Are you now still I've doing had that, that. I've had it being that intense at Mansfield Reformatory. Really? Or Gettys, not Gettysburg, Antietam, mm -hmm. because once the spirit world finds out that you can talk to them, mm -hmm. they just mob. And yeah. it will be just voices coming at you. And unless you're trained enough to go, uh-uh-uh, we're not doing that one at a time, or I can't hear any of you. Was and it like that at the homestead and the cemetery when you were doing the dowsing rods? They weren't quite that mobbish, okay. but they kind of got that way. But I yeah. also, as soon as I enter a location, I say, these are my boundaries. If you want to talk to me, you follow them. Yeah. And um, generally, I don't get mobbed. Um, okay. they'll come up one at a time, but that's because I come off as this extremely like thumbs the rules and yeah. I can just shut it all off if I want to. And then they're all like, Oh, <laughs> then I want to talk to people. I to talk to people. Yeah. Sometimes well, maybe that's why things were so quiet for me and Katie. I, I don't know. But don't, they were still around. They're probably just watching you and probably going, well, they're with her and she can hear us. So can she hear us? Oh. You get that kind of, uh -huh. yeah. Which but we like, couldn't. Yeah. And at Antietam and at Mansfield, it was just groups of young men just yeah. all chatting at wow. the same time. Because they don't, especially at Antietam, they don't have that many psychic mediums going through. Gettysburg, yeah. so many. But there's like... <laughs> This sounds really funny. There's almost no one left on the spiritual plane that hasn't transitioned over already because mm -hmm. there's been so many psychics that have gone through and transferred people that there's maybe four guys on the battlefield still going, <laughs> dum -da -dum -dum -dum. we don't want to go. <laughs> we're but gonna stay here. <laughs> yeah, we're going to stay really here. Funny. We're like watching the thing. I love that mental image. Yeah. yeah, they just sit there and this young guys think like 14 <laughs> to 18 just twiddling their thumbs on a rock in the middle of the wheat field uh, at, at Gettysburg. At Antietam, though, there aren't as many people. It kind of gets overlooked in that paranormal sense. It, not so much since the paranormal shows have been on. But when I went, it was groups of men running at me. Whoa. And that is scary when they're, they're on horseback. <laughs> and they're all ages. Because like their commanders are still out there, too. And they're like bushy and angry looking Santa Claus type people. Oh. And they're on horseback. And a bunch of cramp eye coming towards oh. you. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not ready for this boundary, boundary, boundary. Like, yeah, it gets. And it. And I can see Arnold's being the same way. Um, just when you're going there, you're not going there to transfer people over or really talk to the dead. So they don't have a lot of opportunity to talk to people that can talk to them back who are alive and do mm -hmm. things like i say it's like the tv show ghosts it, it's they're always mobbing yeah, we, i mean we were yeah, kind yeah. of like i mean because because it, it got it went till two and and so you all were in the bathroom we went in there for a little bit but it was crowded in there so yeah so katie and i and i was starting living to get really people? tired so i was like yes sitting living, at a table. with people living people <laughs> I was I was uh, I was sitting in at one of the tables and it was just dark and I was starting to doze off. No, yeah. oh, yeah. And uh, Katie came over and we were just kind of hanging out mm -hmm. because we didn't yeah. really see much or hear much, obviously. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I always was... reached that point too. When I was getting I was getting really tired then too, and I stayed in the bathroom because it had chairs. Uh -huh. Yeah, and and yeah, yeah, Chris is being bombarded with. Yeah. <laughs> well, but it was cool because. The parent, I, I wish I could remember her name because she was really nice. Yeah, the lady mm -hmm. was really nice that was from them. And we, we might be able to get some names, like check the yeah. pages and mm -hmm. put it but in the notes. She's like, oh, this hasn't been happening all night. I'm going to sit here. And she and Chris were just going back and forth. Oh, yeah, she was into trying it. She was to good. get yeah. whatever they could. And uh, yeah, and she ended up sitting in the bathtub too. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was just, it was really interesting. I'll go back. I'll send you guys my my videos. I yeah, don't know yeah, we should we or... should, and and maybe Kat can listen to some of the audio and see if you hear anything. Yeah, oh, yes. I, I will do that. Listening to EVP is something like I do. I have my big, big yeah. Headphones. She's she's she knows what she's doing. Yeah, well, and it's not again. It was just video on my phone, so it's not going to be fancy like your recorder was. 
but yeah, you never know. Anchorage. Yeah, phones do well too. Like okay. some of my friends' favorite recording devices were the Blackberries, the oh, cell phones, uh -huh. oh, because yeah. they had pretty good uh, recording equipment internally. So, huh? okay. yeah, for a really long time, that's what people used. And you can okay. easily transfer the data off of them. So, yeah. It's not always some fancy recorder like what I have now. Okay. That was a, hey, we're semi-pro. Things shouldn't sound weird when we're playing them over air type yeah. of thing. But it's fine. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I'd like to hear your reaction. Maybe there is something we missed. Oh, that's yeah. true. Oh. I can yeah. listen. Yeah. Unbiased party going through and... Uh, I though I'd have a lot of questions. I'm like, is this a person who was there? That's the problem with doing EVP in large groups. Mm -hmm. Unless you're doing, if you remember, I had everyone say their names. Yeah, there was um, none of that. <laughs> yeah, unless you're doing that, um, it gets really like, was this a person? Is this a person burping? Is this a person passing gas in the back? Is yeah. like, yeah, so, but I can listen. I have no problem okay. doing that. I, did, I think I didn't listen to it. Because I don't want to hear something on there. <laughs> well, then just send them to me because it's not going to scare me. Like, okay. I don't think you could be scared if you've had groups of ghosts running no. at you. I mean, no. I think that uh -uh. that probably is. There's, that has to be like some sort of bar that you've reached when. <laughs> I remember watching it happening and going, this is my life. <laughs> <laughs> barrier, barrier. No, no. no. Stay back. So do you speak Spanish, Cat? No, I don't. Oh. <laughs> like, so put on your Spanish filter so that you Google Translate. Yeah, it's I've run into foreign languages before, and mm -hmm. I really like it when that happens because it's refreshing to me. Because I'm like, yeah, everyone speaks different languages, but we don't like you can carry that over into the next world. Uh, that used to be one of the big questions. It still is actually in the paranormal is when you die, when you communicate, are you going to communicate with people in the, your native language or like a babble fish, basically, hmm. or if a babble fish type thing happens where everything gets translated from the netherworld type of thing. Yeah. So um, I've run into German and Japanese. I know Japanese. So that didn't throw me off except for I wasn't expecting it. Mm -hmm. And uh, um the German was just like, yep, this is, this is a part. And also French in, in parts of Indiana, French was spoken. So, mm -hmm. huh. and uh, then there's also languages that sometimes I don't know what they are because I haven't had the chance to listen to them to identify what they are. Like Algonquin, if I heard that being spoken, I would not unfortunately know what it is. I would understand that it is a language that is being spoken to me but I wouldn't be able to pin down what the language family is. So also you're asking somebody who's a trained linguist. So languages are kind of my thing. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That's cool. I sometimes have a hard time telling the difference between Spanish and Italian. Yes. Yeah, Spanish also Portuguese can throw people off mm -hmm. and all these languages have accents that are regional and mm -hmm. verbiage and grammar that's regional and also languages evolve mm -hmm. so it may not be something that has been that even if it, they were a native speaker they may not actually if it's like a historic spanish that right. was only spoken in the midwest during the 1840s somebody who's a current language spanish speaker may not identify it completely like if i listened to japanese from hokkaido in the 1910s i would be hosed because I would not be able to completely understand what they're saying no. just from dialect changes, verbiage changes, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. those are all things to take into account. But if you know them, it helps to identify when in time they are taking place. So well, that's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So on that note, I, I suppose it's been a little over an hour, so we can yeah. probably wrap it up. Yeah. Well, this is really interesting hearing Chris's experiences. Yes. It sounds like you had a eventful time. It was eventful. So did did you get any hitchhikers coming home with you? No, no. Okay. No. Yeah, they you all don't stayed allow there. Right on. Yeah. I do. I do not allow um, that at all. And yeah. uh, you know when when we left, I, for me, what I usually do is I'm just like, okay, thank you. I really appreciate your time. I just kind of like say that to the general. Mm -hmm. either 
you know, everybody who's right there. Um, and, you know, the little girl, I thanked her for being, you know, the guide, the tour guide of the building. Um, even though she did, she was very emphatic in one point of saying, you know, you need to leave. And she was no. very insistent. You need to leave. You need to leave. Um, so the spirit talker kept telling us that too, to leave. Yeah. yeah. When was that, Chris? That was, um, that's when um, we were on the first floor and you and were doing the spirit talker with that other people next to you, where mm. Christina and I were sitting at the end of the bar with our backs to the window and we were asking like other oh, questions. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And okay. It, I remember. Yeah. Uh-huh. So. Why did uh, you want us to leave? <clears throat> um, they were annoyed with us. They, it, she was more annoyed, <laughs> annoyed with the general, I think, just the general. Leave us alone. I don't want to answer your stupid yeah. questions. <laughs> I will. She wasn't, no, she wasn't quite like that. She just, I don't think she appreciated the entire mindset of some of the people in the group. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I'll yeah. say. Um, and then, you know, remember that was before we went up to the bathtub room. Mm -hmm. So when we went to the bathtub room, I mean, we I don't know because I didn't speak that language. I don't know what they were saying. She may have, and you know, it could have been some like horrific warning or, or something. And I would never have, right. I don't know right. what they're right. saying. Um, so she could have just been very easily been like, no, I'm insistent. I think you need to leave, like leave now. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you know, it, it wasn't like a dire straits, like, you got to get out and you got to get out now. Cause I usually feel like an internal, like icy hand in the gut kind of like yeah. thoracic mm. chest. If it's like, no, I got to go. And I have to go now. Um, yeah. Jen, you've seen me do that before in, um, you know, certain places and um, you know, have I? yeah, you have. That's okay. right. Um, well, if she was going to bring anything home with her, she was staying with me that weekend. So it would have been here. And I'm like, mm, no, 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 no. I'm just like, <laughs> Nope. I've got, you know, Red Rock is my, you know, my equivalent to Cat Your Sam. And I'm like, mm. nope, we don't, I don't play around yeah. with that. Nope. Um, yeah. You know, I'm like, you're lucky I'm saying hi to you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boundary. And vice versa. Yeah. yeah. Boundary. So boundary. Yeah. It's, uh, well, would you go again? Absolutely. It, yes. Okay. Yeah. Always. I've been yeah. to Mansfield several times. Um, yeah, I and I I uh, would love to go there again. And there's lots mm -hmm. of other places that I haven't been. So, so yeah. I have to say, though, when that was early on in our friendship, when I took her to Mansfield mm -hmm. and I didn't know this about her yet. No, she had not given me that oh, information no. yet. So uh, through the years, she dropped something or what are you? Oh, you remember this when this happened at Mansfield? I'm like, no. You didn't tell me. Oh my <laughs> so goodness! First time hearing about it. <laughs> I I can understand though, Chris. Are you the same yeah. way where you're like, I don't want to tell people unless I really trust them that I see dead people. Yeah. Well, because yeah. It's like I mean, hello. It's like the sixth sense like nailed that particular portion in the movie. You know, like yes. yeah, I see dead people. And everybody's like, what? Yeah. Um, you know, since and I've talked about that before in a previous episode. I mean, you know, I saw my first one when I was, you know, like six and mm -hmm. full conversation apparition tell you, you know, everything that this person was wearing. Um, and, you know, fast forward, you know, to now, you know, it's only been in the very few, like very few less than five years, I'd say that, you know, I've really like opened up with Jen where I'm like, oh yeah, blah, 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 blah. And here's blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. um, not because yeah, I didn't she, trust you her. You hinted but, at stuff before, but you would yeah. never go into detail and I would never ask. I don't know if that's because I was picking up on you saying, don't ask, you know, in a way, or I just wasn't ready to hear it. You weren't ready to hear it. Um, but like when I go to like one, you know, spiritualist church or, um, a, you know, I had a very definitive, um, you know, I did a, a Zoom church meeting back in January mm -hmm. and um, my great grandmother, like, again, I felt like because it was like a like right through my chest. I know we talk, I talked about that previously as well. And she gave me very clear demands. Um, mm -hmm. Like, why haven't you done what I told you to do yet? Oh, Whoa. yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, oh, wow. And, yeah. And uh and she gave me very clear instructions um, about 10 years ago. And I threw 
through spirit and um, I hadn't done it and I hadn't done it. And so I, I finally did it this year and, you know, finally things were just kind of like, boom, 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 like just kind of like went into place. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's, there's times where like, you have to be open to it. People have to be, you know, willing to hear, but there's also, I mean, like, you know, I knew eventually I would tell her all of it. It was just a matter of like when she was ready for it. Cause it wasn't about me. It was about her. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And, and uh, yeah, she came around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at me now. Yeah. You don't want to do it too early. Remember how I freaked out Katie. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It, it's just oh. like, I got too open too early and I freaked out poor Katie. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I don't know. So bad I that. don't think if you had told me, I would have been like, uh huh, uh huh. I still would have listened to you. Don't you think? I don't you know don't how think. I feel about like if I started experiencing seeing people around all the time. That seems like that would be easy to freak one out. Like, yeah, it feels like you'd have to see it <laughs> early. Like yeah. seeing it at this age, it feels like it would be really. Yeah, you'd be uh, going directly to the doctor and saying, <laughs> "Give me scans." Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. If if it's something you've experienced your whole life, that's the only thing you've ever known. I do yeah. want to say, if you are seeing people, go get scans. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> yes. No. <but> please. <laughs> yes. If you're Rule it out seeing first. people. Get scans. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean, that's just it from the from the the like day one that I met Jen, and um, I knew instantly, instantly because you know, the person that was behind her that's constantly with her was like, this is your new best friend. And I was like, thank you very much. I got you. They didn't tell me that though. No, didn't really have to. They told one of us. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, got across. I know we're getting sidetracked here, but But if anybody knows me really well, I tend not to keep people around very long and I've moved a lot. So when I moved, in back in the day when you didn't have social media or whatever, you would lose touch. So I just figured that's what w- would happen when I moved b- from Indianapolis back to Cincinnati. No, Christine did not let that happen. <laughs> I, so I'm kinda, stuck with her now. You, yeah. Oh yeah, you are. Yeah, you, which means of all of you are now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, so. We're all tied together now. Yeah. And isn't that the word? In, isn't that the word? Yes. Entang- is that where the word entanglement comes from? Where they talk about that yeah, sort of thing? There's quantum that- entanglement. Yes, yeah. entanglement. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and there's there's lots of of knots that are done on multi multi and to me anyway. In my like the way that it presented to me is like it's like every person that you meet, you're like it's a new tether and you're not in a in yes. this big net like a yes. literal oh well, yeah it's net. like it's like the greek myth right of the weavers yes yeah. oh yes yeah yeah i mean there's actually the- cord cutting ceremonies that psychics can do to try to rid you of really? toxic family or toxic yeah, I mean, the, the, the... wow! Happy, happy holidays, everyone. Talk to family. Um, but, but, but the fates, right? Is that what? Yeah, that's it's the, the, yes, the, the fates. fates. Yeah, I just but always I remember suspect... Clotho. But um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I... <laughs> such an obvious name. Sorry, but yeah, uh, you could do cord cutting ceremonies at a lot of different psychic fairs, and oh, they they can rid really of toxic relationships. Yeah, I mean, so... I suspect that that mythology is probably in a bunch of different like in different forms but like the same idea it is you can you can go back through you know shamanism and you know with you know with the ancestors of you know the raven carrying over and back and forth and you've got the ceremonies that they have and there's different you know between each tribe was different versus you know what the celtics had versus what you know egypt and and africa has and south america i mean so it's like they have found evidence of this in every single culture that's been around. And it's just, you know, it's kind of like puck wudgies. We just call it something different wherever we are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. And different I love branding. just saying, yeah, yeah, exactly. I just love saying puck wudgies. I yeah. think different <laughs> names for the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mothman. That's really, that's really interesting. <laughs> the most I mean, it would be puck wudgie of them all. 
<laughs> it would be really interesting to see something like that to see how all of that works. A puck oh, wedgie? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. The the web. The fate. Yes. Again, fate. I hope when I die, I get to know all things. Good and bad. I want to know all of it. Mm -hmm. I hope yeah. there's just like my a, grandma used to say that all the time too. You know. Yeah. Oh no, my calico cat's here. So we're getting like oh, a parade of Oh, oh I should I should yeah, well I let me see it. Instead of moving her. Yeah, this is my calico. Aww. This is Miffy. Aww. She's a sweet Aww. girl. She is very sweet. And she's older, Chris, like Betsy. Aww. Well, she's not as she's gonna be 13 this year. So. Okay, so she actually she's much younger. Never mind. She's yeah, much she's, younger. She is she's just had more, she just has health problems. She has Aww. she's doing better though. She's been gaining weight, so that's good. I hope yeah, that, good. that's a good thing. So, yeah, if you see a cat in my room, it's not mine. <laughs> this has been our special cat episode. Oh, yeah, we talked about uh, Arnold's as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's the title. Oh, yeah, we talk about Arnold's as well. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we still haven't seen Jen's cats, though. They've been strangely yeah. absent. No, Betsy doesn't really yeah. leave the bedroom unless she needs to pee or eat. Yeah, and like then yeah. Clover comes in every <laughs> once in a while. But she was bellowing earlier. And so I yeah. muted myself and tried to get her to come in here. And she oh, yeah. she didn't. So yeah, it was either her or Betsy. I'm not sure which one it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Miffy's still here. She's rubbing the microphone with her face. No, that's Aww. sweet. She says she, I can, I can you hear, hear it. it. <laughs> Maybe I should. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. They're little brats, is what it is. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Well, my two haven't burst into here like yeah, we, cool yeah. man, like they did last episode. It, it seems like the animals want to be part of the podcast now. They're they like, do. they're not just going to be. Chris, you <laughs> missed it. It was Thundar last episode took out a stack of paperwork next to Christina <laughs> on mm -hmm. camera oh. with a hot mic. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was cut out for <laughs> the episode. Yeah. Just slide backwards, and all this paper come down. <laughs> oh, just, no. The only thing that would have made it great would have been a <laughs> right. <or something>. <laughs> <laughs> I know. me out because he is actually pretty talkative. Yeah, Aww. I was surprised. I just saw this I... leg and a tail. <laughs> yeah, they've been all of wild. our animals made an appearance in that one. Yeah, last we, week. It was, it's there's something Aww. going on. Yeah, but on that note, I guess that means we should. Yes. So everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this wonderful episode of the Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities presents the Hometown Haunts podcast. I am your host, Kat Clogo. Along with me are Christina, Jen, and of course, Chris. And you can follow us at Sin Cabinet Curio on Twitter, at Cincy Cabinet of Curiosities on Instagram. Don't forget to join our Facebook group, Hometown Haunts. And also, if you have a story, especially if you have a story about Arnold's Bar and experiencing anything there please write in i we would all love to hear your stories and that is hometown haunted mail at gmail.com doesn't just need to be arnold's bar how about your local hometown bar or pub hometown haunt there we go <laughs> um we need like a chime or something for that anyway <laughs> um yeah your hometown haunt your hometown bar we'd love to hear those stories so Hometown haunted mail at gmail.com. So, on behalf of myself and the rest of the crew here, good night and stay spooky. Bye bye. Bye. bye.